G'day, I'm Paul. Isuzu, they have just facelifted the MUX. Well, very minor facelift. So today I'm gonna to run you through the changes, give you an idea of what to expect if you go in to buy one of these. This is the top specification Isuzu MUX LST. This is the four x four version. This is priced at a little over $67,000. If that's too expensive, the entire range kicks off at just under 50 grand. This competes with things like the new Ford Everest, the Mitsubishi Pajero Sport, the Toyota Fortuna. Today we're gonna to do a detailed review of this along with some light off-roading as well. Well, if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of the video, you can use the time codes on the screen, or if you're on YouTube, you can scroll down and use the chapters below. If you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive a car with a new color. So you've got eight different colors to pick from. All but white is gonna set you back $650. This one is a new one. I actually quite like this color. Um, so what exactly has changed? So the grill has changed a little bit. So uh, it looks slightly different to the outgoing version. There's also some sort of shaded in uh, shadow elements around the car as well. You'll notice that on the rear lights too. But outside of that, it looks pretty much the same. Isuzu logo here, and then uh, cooling for the engine here with those open gaps and parking sensors down the front there. In terms of the headlights, full LED headlights with LED daytime running light. You also have an LED fog light down the bottom there as well. Some of those surrounds around that fog light have changed too. Um, around the side here, you've got a new set of 20 inch alloy wheels. So the design has changed. You've got that sort of machined finish on the outside and a graphite finish on the inside there as well. Uh, outside of that, it um, is pretty much the same. So sitting on highway terrain tires, will be interesting to see how this goes on our off-road course. The Everest struggled a little bit getting up our hill on the highway terrain tires that it has. So we'll see how it goes here with the MUX. Uh, up the top here, you have an indicator built into the wing mirror, still no 360 camera, so it's bare down the bottom there. Color of this has changed as well, so it has that sort of shadow finish on it too, but sort of feels a little bit sort of uh, flimsy on the side there. And look, if you are gonna be doing any serious off-roading, I'd be replacing these because uh, one whack with some rocks and that will dent pretty easily. And it's the same story with uh, Pajero Sport and Everest as well. They have the same sort of pretty basic uh, sidestep there. So I'd be changing that if you're gonna do anything too serious. Uh, this up the top here has changed as well. The roof rail, you have privacy glass and then whip around to the rear. So around the back here, LED tail lights or part LED tail lights, still incandescent globes in there, unfortunately. Uh, but this whole section here has a bit of a um, smoky finish to it. So as you are approaching this, you can notice that. And I actually think it looks way better that way. It kind of gives it a bit of an aggressive look, especially here with the darker paint colors as well. Uh, three TD for the engine. Now there is something interesting in here as well. So it's part of the, the facelift here with D-Max and also MUX. They've integrated a sensor within here that's going to allow this to do a disability of some of the safety systems if you do have a trailer attached. So that is a handy feature because you don't want to have all your buzzers and alerts going off with this thinking that you're about to reverse into something when it is just a trailer attached to the back of the vehicle. Uh, three and a half ton braked towing capacity. And then you can see those sensors integrated along the bottom there as well. Brake light up the top here and then individual Isuzu lettering here as well. There is another change here to the tailgate too. If you do approach with the key in your pocket and just stand behind it, it'll then open on its own too, which is a handy feature. It means if you do have your hands full, you don't need to go looking around for the powered tailgate. So let me know what you think about the changes in the comments section below. Do you reckon it's enough? Do you think this is still a good looking vehicle? Keen for your feedback, let me know down there. So we're inside the MUX, uh, we'll start off with the key. Up the top there, you have the remote start function. Good for switching the car on on hot days to get the AC running or uh, cold days to get the heater running. Uh, lock button, unlock, boot. You have a little bit of uh, sort of brushed aluminium around there and then Isuzu on the back. It's a proximity sensing key, so you can leave that in your pocket. Once you're inside the cabin, you have a push button start up the top here. So uh, in terms of the design, this will all look pretty familiar if you've seen any of our other MUX reviews. And that means you have this soft touch finish along the top of the dashboard there with the uh, infotainment system sort of sitting proud in the center there up the top. Uh, you have a lot of piano black around here and down the bottom sections. I don't love piano black because it is hard to keep clean. It scratches easily as well, even on this sort of fairly new car. It, um, it is showing signs of wear already. I did think this was interesting. So this is the top spec, the most expensive one you can get in Australia. It has a stack of blank buttons around here. So curious to know what that's for. I think someone may have mentioned that one of these can pop out 
for the brake controller, but you've also got buttons down here that you could use for that as well. Uh, in fact, the brake controller is fitted down here instead of down here. So yeah, I don't know what you would use these for, but it is missing some of the features that um, this vehicle may have in other markets. Now, in terms of your touch points in the center here, that's nice and soft and soft on the doors as well. How soft is it? We've got our durometer. We've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. Build quality, what's that like? Actually, it doesn't feel too bad. A little bit wonky in the center there, but uh, the rest of this feels pretty good. And our door test. Sounds great. Very nice and confident slam. Now, infotainment, so you have a nine inch color touch screen here in the center. It all works okay. Uh, there's sort of no real issues with it. It just doesn't feel anywhere near as advanced as what we find in the new Ford Everest. And I think that Toyota will update their infotainment system as well to be more of that Lexus style they have in some of their other products. It is light years ahead of the Pajero Sport though, because that thing is well and truly dated. You have satellite navigation built into here, so you don't have to have a smartphone connected to use your navigation. But if you do want to have your smartphone connected, you have both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Apple CarPlay is wireless, so you can see here that that all works pretty quickly, nice and straightforward as well. And this is what Android Auto looks like. So full screen integration again there and nice and quick and easy to use as well. Um, on the radio front, you have AM, FM, DAB, digital radio, and it's all plumbed through an eight speaker sound system. Sound system's okay, nothing sort of uh, too crash hot. Ahead of the driver, you also have a very small display here that gives you uh, your trip computer, uh, fuel, engine temperature, and that kind of thing as well. This will give us a bit more detail when we go off-roading as well, so I'll show you that stuff when we do actually hit the road. On the safety front, you have autonomous emergency braking. It also has a junction assist function so if you try and turn across oncoming traffic, it's going to hit the brakes for you. Um, auto dimming, rear vision mirror. Now, the interesting thing I did notice on the drive over here is that when you put this down, it hits the mirror. And I don't remember any other uh, MUXs doing that. So I don't know if there's something I'm doing wrong here or something, but... Yeah, I think that is a pretty poor design just there. Uh, on uh, the other safety features, you have radar cruise control. You have a steering assist function, which we're going to test out later on. You have a blind spot monitor built into the wing mirror as well. You have rear cross traffic alert, both front and rear parking sensors and a reverse view camera. I'll show you what that looks like. So there it is there. It's not the best quality in the world. You can kind of make out what's on the suitcase, but the bigger issue is that the camera is totally offset. So tow bar's over here somewhere. So if you are reversing to attach a trailer, you will find it tricky to line that up and get it all sort of in alignment with where it needs to be. So it would be good if the actual camera was central to the tailgate so that you can actually line up a trailer much easier. And finally, the horn test. Sounds like it belongs on a small car. Moving along to practicality, we'll start off with your connectivity. So you've got a 12 volt outlet off to the side here. You have one a USB port, which is a little bit disappointing. I would have thought you'd have more than one because if you do have Android Auto, if you do want to charge your phone, um, you only have that one option available. Your passenger can't do anything. Uh, in terms of phone storage though, you can whack your phone down here or down the bottom there. You can also get an accessory wireless phone charger. It's about 400 and something dollars that slots in down there. Um, in terms of storing other things, coffee cup. So it lives in here, but because it sits a little too deep, you can de-lid your small coffee. So you've got to prop it up with some keys or something. Water bottle fits into there without any dramas. And because it's a nice deep slot, it doesn't move around too much. Fits inside the door too. I do love this feature as well. So you can put your bottle in front of the air vents too to keep it cool on a hot day. Now, what about our big bottle inside the door? Yes, fits in there, no dramas. Now, in addition to that, you have a little storage slot here just next to the driver's knee. You've got a reasonable center console there. You have two sets of glove boxes. So one down the bottom for the enormous manual. You have another one up the top here. And then in addition to that, you also have a sunglasses holder right up the top there as well. Now your comfort. So you have dual zone automatic climate control. You have heated seats for the front row. Seats are really comfy too. So for long distance driving, these are fantastic. They have perforations in there as well to keep you nice and cool. You have electric seat adjustment for the driver and front passenger. So you can go forwards, backwards, backrest can go forwards, backwards. You can lift the front of the seat back of the seat plus lumbar adjustment too. Uh, steering wheel offers both tilts and reach adjustment and on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Okay, so second row, what's it like? Um, look, 
knee room's not too bad, toe room is a little bit cramped, uh, head room is okay. Uh, but outside of that, it is a pretty comfortable place to be seated. You've got mat pockets in the back of the seats, little hook here for shopping and stuff. Uh, you have air vents up the top here. You have two USB-A ports down here for charging, plus a little storage nook. You've got ISOFIX points on the two outboard seats with three top tether points. Center armrest here with two cup holders. Yeah, it's not, not a no, yeah, that's not too bad. It's not a terrible system. Uh, you also have bottle storage inside the door as well. Now, our window test. Let's see, so it's manual up and down. Boom, goes all the way down. Very impressive. Okay, so third row, what's it like for adults? Let's give it a shot. So this isn't a slide forward system. It's a sort of fold and tumble, and then you climb on in through here. Ugh, right, we'll drop this down. Give that a little slam. <laughs> Not strong enough. Igor, can you give me a hand with that, please? Just um, lifting that up. Yeah, it's much easier from his angle. Uh, so, in terms of room, I'm actually pretty surprised by this. Have a look at this. I have a decent amount of knee room there. Toe room is pretty good as well, and headroom is slightly compromised. But as an adult, I would be pretty comfortable sitting in here, well, sitting in the third row here for a long distance drive. I've got cup holders off to the side. I have my own air vents up the top as well. So, it is actually a pretty comfortable place to be seated. So, um, we'll have a look at the boot because that doesn't look all that big. Maybe that is where they've eaten into the space that's available. So you've got power tailgate. I mentioned before that if you approach with the key, it'll come up on its own. There it is. So I did notice this with the last MUX that we drove, it doesn't go up very high. And as a result of that, you kind of whack your head on that. Um, now they say that there's a little over 300 liters of cargo space available here with the third row in place, but I think they measure that with every skerrick of available space because I, I just don't see how there's 300 litres available there even with this space beneath the cargo floor. You have a full size spare under there and to give you an idea of how much space you have in here, that's the laptop bag in there and then the suitcase there and I don't think that'll close. We'll give that a quick shot with the suitcase there. We'll see what happens when it finally gets down. Oh no, it does close, there you go. So you can actually fit a suitcase and a laptop bag in there, which is uh, pretty good. So once this comes back up, I'll get the bags out. Now, we can expand the space a little bit more. By the way, there is a light and a 12 volt outlet off to the side here. Uh, you can expand the space by dropping your third row out of the way. That increases the space to a little over 1100 liters. If you do then want the ultimate load space, you drop your second row which you can lay flat or fold all the way forward like that. And then once you've done that, that expands the space to a little over 2,100 litres. Okay, so we have just hit the road in the MUX. Powering this, a three litre turbocharged four cylinder diesel engine makes 140 kilowatts of power and 450 newton metres of torque, and that's all mated to a six speed automatic transmission. Uh, unlike the Pajero Sport and the Everest, uh, but like the Fortuna, you can only drive this in uh, two wheel drive high range on sealed surfaces and then four wheel drive high range and low range on unsealed surfaces. So you will get a transmission bind with that. Um, so do keep that in mind. Um, how does it all feel behind the wheel? Well, look, the gearbox can be a little bit lazy at times, but once you do get stuck into it, the 450 newton meters of torque, I reckon is a little bit underrated. I think that it is actually slightly more than that because it does feel quite punchy and it does feel like it is closer to that 500 newton meter mark. Uh, or thereabouts. So behind the wheel, it does actually feel energetic. And then when you do get stuck into it, once you overcome that sort of gearbox lag, it actually gets up and moves pretty quickly. I also like the steering in these. It's really nice and light. So when you are parking in and around the city, it makes that whole slow maneuvering and even the fast maneuvering stuff really straightforward. It's not anywhere near as heavy as the Pajero Sport and the Fortuna. So it does feel quite nice here behind the wheel. Now, Isuzu claims a combined fuel economy of around nine liters per 100 Ks. We are currently sitting on 9.2. So that is uh, pretty decent there. I'm impressed with that. So we have been doing a little bit of highway driving, but for the most part, that fuel economy is actually right where it needs to be. Um, the other thing worth pointing out at this stage as well is that they finally fixed this issue with um, 
the lane keeping assistant because you used to have to stop the car, go through all these menus and faff about. Now you can just push and hold the steering wheel button here and you'll see down the bottom there, it engages and disengages the lane keeping assistant. And uh, like I mentioned before, when you are towing, it also disables any other aids that are going to interfere with towing, such as your rear cross traffic alert and also the rear parking sensors when you do have a trailer attached. Now you don't have any on-road drive modes, but uh, what we'll do is we'll go for a little fang around our track see how dynamic this is now i understand this is not a sports car which is perfectly fine oh that is a lot of body roll and a lot of stability control intervention yeah okay um, we have mentioned previously with dmax uh, in particular that the traction control is just overly intrusive and doesn't really work with you it is constantly working against you i can feel the same here as we are sort of going around these parts of the track it does sort of just keep biting and it is constantly doing stuff and not really letting you control. like right now it's biting as we go around that corner and there's just literally no need for it to be biting um yeah look compared to something like the everest this doesn't feel anywhere near as dynamic ford really did a great job with engineering the everest to be comfortable but also dynamic when the speed picks up yes this is not what you're going to be driving these cars like but we drive them all uh, back to back in the exact same way to, to unearth these things that you wouldn't be able to find on a public road. So yeah, a little bit disappointing in terms of how this handles and hopefully it's something they can address with uh, future updates to the MUX. Okay, let's jack it up to 130 k's an hour, which is maximum speed in parts of Australia. And it's also the speed we attack our sine waves at to see what body control is like. Oh. It is fairly bouncy. Um, yeah, look, it is fairly bouncy, but the, the offside to that is that in and around the city, it is actually really comfortable. So you hit uh, potholes, speed humps, that kind of thing. It actually is quite nice and, and relaxing over those. There isn't, um, there isn't too much sort of bucking about there. Okay, time to head to our rough road. So this is a new test that we've introduced. We do this at 90 k's an hour and there's a compressed sine wave here as well, which really tests how quickly the suspension responds to changes in road condition and uh, the body then responds accordingly and it'll either float over it or really sort of feel nice and controlled. So here we go, 90 k's an hour over our close sine wave. Yeah, look, it is floating over it a little bit, but it's not the end of the world. So it means I still have control over the car and you can hear in my voice, this is a seriously bad example of a road, a very bad country road, but it is handling it really nicely and very comfortably inside the cabin too. Now in terms of road noise, it's actually not too bad. It's fairly good inside the cabin, even on coarse chip roads. It does get a little noisy when you step on the throttle. It is quite a thrashy sounding engine, um, but for the most part, it's not the end of the world. So what's your visibility like? Look, down the front of the car there, I can see clearly without any dramas, big old wing mirrors as well, which is great news for towing. Visibility out the rear is pretty good as well. That envelope is fairly large. Do keep in mind though, if you do have the third row up with the headrest deployed, it does make it a little harder to see out the back. Okay, time to do some semi-autonomous driving testing. So I'm gonna get this up to 70 k's an hour and set the cruise control. And then we're gonna test how well it does its lane keeping assistance functions. So uh, I'm gonna press this little button here, the steering wheel, that'll light up. That's gone green. The lanes have gone green as well. So I'm just gonna let go of the wheel. It's designed for you to hold the wheel, but just for the sake of illustrating this, I'm letting go. That is not very good. That is already over the line. And this is the easiest part of our track where we test this stuff. We're gonna to go to the two outer lanes as well. Uh, it has gone back into the center now, but it's sort of immediately shot towards the line there. All right, so let's jump up to the second lane here. See how this goes. So I'll wait for all that to go green. Waiting, waiting, waiting. Still nothing. Okay, it's green now, so I'll just gradually let go of the wheel. So that's pretty much gone completely over the line and it's bringing itself back in now, but again, going over the line. If this was like a real world driving situation, I would currently be in somebody else's lane. If there was a truck next to me, I would be like next to the truck. Um, so yeah, not good. Uh, let's try the last lane and see how it fares up here. Okay, we'll just wait for that to activate. So it's detected the lines. Just gonna wait for that to go green. Okay, that's gone green. Let's gradually let go of the wheel. No, that's just canceled itself altogether. So. Yeah, look, not 
not a very good system. And it's worth keeping in mind that Pajero Sport doesn't have any of these sort of assistance controls at all, really. Uh, neither does Fortuna. The only one in the segment that does is Everest, and that works really well. We have tested that here. Um, so I think this just needs a bit of fine tuning. Got all the hardware, it just needs to be calibrated a little bit better and hopefully then once that is calibrated better they can roll that software update out to existing owners. So we don't have an official 0 to 100 time but we have our GPS measurement device. Let's give this a little crack. So I'm going to switch off traction control so we can get a little bit of slip off the line there. We'll dial up some revs and we'll see how we go. Slip off the line. We'll go all the way through to 120 so I can get our 80 to 120 result as well. So here we go, there's 90, 100. Oh, 20 chance took a while to get there. All right. Okie dokie, so zero to 100 took 11.09 seconds and then 80 to 120 took 8.75 seconds. So that 80 to 120 number is important for things like overtaking. And it's showing here that it took almost as long to get from 80 to 120 as it did from zero to 100. Uh, so it is worth keeping that in mind. Um, let's go do some braking. We'll see how quickly it stops from 100 k's an hour. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go, all right. All righty, let's have a little sticky beak there. 100 to zero took 3.32 seconds and 43.6 meters. So uh, if you do want to see how the acceleration or the braking results compare to other cars that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description below. This is only a new test that we're doing, so it's going to take us a little while to build that up, but um, all the results are down there. And now our reverse acceleration test. Let's see how fast the MUX will go in reverse. Here we go. All right, so 48 kilometers an hour. Okay, let's do a little bit of light off-roading. I'll run you through the four-wheel drive specs first. So you have a full-time two-wheel drive system. You have four-wheel drive high range for use on unsealed surfaces four-wheel drive low range. You also have a rear diff lock, which you can only use when this is in low range. You also have hill descent control as well, uh, and also a rough road mode, which we'll test out in just a second. Um, if you do want to know how to use all of these controls and have a better understanding of how it all works, check out this video up here. It's our four-wheel drive controls explained video that runs through all of that. And, how it all works and when not to use certain stuff. And then in terms of ground clearance, 235 mil of ground clearance, you have 800 millimeters of weighting depth. Your approach and departure angles come in at 29.2 degrees for the approach angle. That's the angle of the face you can approach before you hit anything. Departure angle is 26.4 degrees, which is the same, but in reverse. So let's have a little shot here. So we're gonna start off in two wheel drive high range. That is to see how well the traction control system works. Uh, D-Max didn't love this, so we'll see if it's any better here in the MUX. So I'm going to get the uh, driver's side rear wheel into the air, and then I'm going to gradually apply throttle, and we will see if the traction control is good enough to get it out of this jam. So here we go, throttle being applied. A little bit more, a little bit more. More throttle. It is rocking a little bit. I can feel it doing something, but we're not really getting anywhere there at all. Um, what I will try, because the D-Max didn't have this, it's this rough road mode. So you press that and it engages it down there. So this will do some work with the stability control to actually help it get out of stuff like this, hopefully. So foot is on the throttle, more on the throttle. Oh, look at that. That is awesome. Actually does something. That's cool. I didn't expect that. So that rough road mode actually seems to do something, which is pretty cool. Um, excellent. All right, so now we're going to go back over our little mogul there, our offset mogul. This time it's going to be in four-wheel drive high range, and we're going to test how well it distributes torque. So you turn this around to 4H, wait for that to activate. You can see it flashing just there. Once that is active, there it is. Um, it's basically sending 50% of torque to the front axle and 50% of torque to the rear axle. But we're going to get it into a situation where... Uh, the front left and the rear right don't have much traction, so it's not only going to have to send torque to the front and rear axle, it's then going to have to use the traction controls to stop those two wheels from just spinning on their own. So 
let's see how it goes. We'll just line it up here. Okay, let's get it into this spot just there. There it is. So I'm going to lean on the throttle, see how well it works. I can hear the traction control doing stuff. I'll apply more and more throttle. A little bit more. It's doing something. I can definitely feel something happening. I'm just going to stay on that. Awesome. Look at that. This is significantly better than the D-Max in terms of how it's performing here. And I have a feeling it all really has to do with that rough road mode. It's just getting it free of the obstacles that the D-Max just continuously struggled with. Okie dokie, next up is our hill. So what we're going to do here, it's kind of loose gravel. Uh, I'm going to set this to low range. So we whip that around to 4L, wait for that to engage. That is on. I'm going to lock the rear diff as well. I'm going to go up this twice. The first time, I'm just going to try and not stop. Uh, the second time around, I'll come back around, stop halfway up and then see if it can make its own way up the hill. Uh, okay, there we go. Rear diff is locked. 4L is engaged. ABS is off. Traction controls off. Uh, the rough road mode doesn't apply here because none of those safety uh, stability control traction aids are on. So let's see how it goes. Okay. So far, so good. Come on, come on. Oh, nice. Nice, that's unreal. So, uh, recently we tested Pajero Sport and Everest here. Both of them really struggled to get up there in this exact same mode. So, really good job there with the MUX. It seems once all this stuff is switched off, it really climbs up pretty easily. So, uh, we're gonna do that again. I'll come to a stop next time around. But first up, let's have a look at our hill descent. So with the hill descent control, uh, what I'll do, I'll actually stick it into four wheel drive high range because it's kind of pointless being in uh, four wheel drive low range with hill descent control because you have enough engine braking there. So there we go, that's in high range. Hill descent control is on. Let's give this a little shot, we'll just climb over this bit. Now this doesn't have a front camera so I can't really see over the edge here, but we'll just see what happens here. So I've rolled out of the brake and off the throttle. Oh, that's pretty messy. Yeah, just too fast, and then all the braking was done right at the bottom, and it was just a bit sort of clumsy. So not a huge fan of that. Uh, unfortunately, that hill descent control isn't very good. So take two for the hill. This time, I'm going to go up and come to a stop, and we'll see how it performs once we do that. So I'll bring it up to around about there. We'll come to a stop, and I'll just roll onto the throttle. Oh, it's struggling a little there. In that. Okay, so that's rear diff locked and four wheel drive low range. It's not loving that at all. I think we're just digging a hole there. Let me just go back a touch. Try that once more. A little bit more momentum. Oh, okay. Got there in the end. Yeah, it was a whole lot more. <laughs> of a struggle that time around. So yeah, I think we are starting to dig a little hole there on our hill, so we're gonna fix that. But um, yeah, uh, needs a bit more momentum to get going. It seems that when we did come to a stop there that um, it didn't really love taking off again once the car was fully stationary. Okay, rock time, here we go. So 226 millimeters of ground clearance. Let's see what it's like across the rocks here. Um, so I'm just, I've left it in four wheel drive low range. I'm just riding the brake with the throttle here and climbing over this stuff nicely. This is one of the benefits of that soft suspension. It's um, moving over the rocks here without too many dramas at all. It's actually really quite comfortable. Uh, no touchdowns yet either, which is good. It's always a good sign. It's actually really surprisingly quite good. I think Pajero Sport had a couple of knocks when we went through here, so this feels nice and comfortable. Yeah, very nice. Okay, cool. Look, Isuzu MUX, uh, what could I say? It's it's interesting. Off-road, it's a completely different car to on-road. Like it is, it feels like it's actually built more for off-road driving than it is on-road driving. It just does everything far easier here. It did struggle a little with the hill there on the way up again, but it seems that rough road mode really helps it in situations where you don't need four-wheel drive low range or the diff locked. So um, yeah, look, as an off-road machine, I think it's pretty good probably just needs a little bit of work on-road to match what it can do here off-road. 
So the updated Isuzu MUX, uh, this is probably like the most minor facelift you'll ever see in your entire life, but it does give us a chance to revisit this. And at the moment with driveway pricing, the MUX is actually pretty good value for money because it's about the same price as the Pajero Sport in top spec trim. And compared to the Pajero Sport, this is a significantly better all round vehicle. But when you do compare it to something like an Everest, uh, with driveway pricing, you're only looking at like an entry level Everest. And I think that when you look at those two side by side, this does have its merits. It isn't as good on road as an Everest. The Everest is really quite dynamic in comparison. Tech in the Everest is significantly better as well, but as an all round package, this is pretty good at that price. Where it really does depart from that is when they stop doing drive away pricing and asking more money. And it's at that point where it doesn't really feel like the best package in the segment. And I am hoping that Isuzu is gonna do something about the traction control systems for off-road driving, just to make them a little better and friendlier, and also perhaps improve some of the on-road driving characteristics as well that kind of let it down if you do want to have a little bit of fun behind the wheel even though that's not what it's designed for so let me know what you reckon about the updated isuzu mux in the comments section below sorry about all these bloody flies uh, i'm keen for your feedback have you got one how long have you waited for one on order i know a lot of people are still waiting for theirs let me know in the comments section below if you did enjoy this video please make sure you like it and you share it with your mates and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon button until next time Take it easy.